What's up everybody? Welcome to the 2300 Gear Jammer channel. Usually I start by saying I'm excited to do something. This time I'm very much not. So we're going to do the fuel injection harness for the Pinto. So if you've got this kind of project coming up or you're in the middle of it and you're nervous or worried about it, don't be. I've done everything I could think of to avoid this. So we got the Ranger out of the weeds, fixed it a couple of times and sent it down the track. We got the parts car Thunderbird. We kind of sort of fixed it and sent it down the track. And outside of that, I'm in the shop a bunch, but I have avoided this for a long time. It's just, it's not something I'm good at, so I don't like doing it. So it's a pretty dusty place. I've cleaned a lot. But I've put this off long enough, and the whole point of doing the channel the way I am now is to build a car from scratch and get it A to B and B being down the track, and then we can test stuff at the track, and it's a lot cheaper and more fun on this. It should make a pretty good sleeper. And we can just see what we learn along the way, see what we break, and everybody can follow along, and hopefully you can get your stuff out and do it. I'm going to do this video the same way I do the others. We'll talk about the parts. I'll go through some of the work. It may be some back and forth. I may take parts home to work on them, but... We're going to go a step at a time. I'll throw the part numbers in there. Let's jump into it. Here we go. All right. I said before the harness is Ron Francis parts, and this is made for a TFI, like a factory 87, 88 Mustang, that style with a distributor. And that's the biggest downside is I'm going to convert that to sequential and waste spark. We've got a couple of things that are going to happen. One, the distributor cap is going to be the same deal I run on the Mustang. This is actually the one off the Mustang because that's the only one i got right now. The DIY Autotune 4-tower coil. Bosch coil igniter. And I just went through with the instructions and labeled just whatever I could. And the wiring's already labeled, but I, I do it big so I can see it in a hurry. And I also went through and figured out things that I could remove. So this is pink wire. This will all go to uh, an inertia switch and things like that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. When you drop the clutch, it'll hit the inertia switch and shut the engine off, so I'd like to avoid that. To make this thing sequential, I'll repin the eek harness, and then on the computer, there will be another connector to the top side. So there's an expansion connector, and I will have coil and two ignition wires that run through that. So this is the expansion harness that plugs into a Stinger Performance Pimp. And I'm gonna run a Pimp XS, I just haven't got it yet. The wide band is gonna be a Spartan 2. So we're gonna not worry about the computer for today, we're just gonna get all of the harness stuff done. So a typical Mustang, the wiring harness, will come through on the passenger side. It's on the inside of the firewall, it runs across, and then it goes to all the engine stuff. And I really don't like that. I prefer drawing a line straight down the middle, all of the hot side where the turbo stuff is on this side and then everything fuel and wiring is on this side. So I want the wiring harness to be on the inside of the firewall, run over and come through. And that's conveniently enough, that is where the factory harness comes through for a Pinto for all the lights and stuff. I moved that, if you go back to the body wiring video, I moved all of that harness to the outside so you can't see any of the, the wiring for the lights. And I'm gonna come through the factory hole for that, for the fuel injection harness. So the first thing I need to do is, we'll clear all this stuff out, get the hood off, and I'm just gonna lay this harness into place, and I'll need to cut some of the tape back and just figure out what will reach, what won't reach. And I'm gonna put the computer in about the same location as the Mustang, which would be in the kick panel on the passenger side. It's gonna be somewhere in that general area. There's nothing that would stop me from pulling this harness out and being able to put it in a Mustang or anything later. Uh, because the the black Mustang is done exactly the way I'm gonna do this one. So let's get the hood off and lay stuff out So I'm getting stuff kind of roughed out to where it goes here and I've got the TFI plugged in for no real reason because it's gonna go away and some of this stuff like this is the Single TFI coil wiring. That's not gonna be there this is Vehicle speed sensor that goes down at the the speedometer cable. I probably won't run that I think these are wires for uh, coolant and maybe oil pressure. Uh, those are gonna go away. Idle air control, that's probably gonna go away. And throttle position sensor. This thing's gonna get a rotated intake. So if it sits here, that in a factory location, it would be fine, but it needs to kind of be way over here so it doesn't quite fit. But, but I'm in place now so I can start pulling this tape off. And you gotta be careful so you don't slice into nice shiny wiring, so. Let me get into that. That's the nervous part, but 
You just go slow. It's all right. Oh, and the coil goes there. Installed, kind of. So coil wiring. I try to run everything back across the intake over the fuel rail and then around and in through the firewall. So this is gonna work out almost exactly the way the Black Mustang did. And I would be willing to bet that this harness would be really close to being able to work on that car. But let's get some tape cut off. On this side of the firewall, I'm just going from the E-connector, pull something through, and then if I don't use it, I'm setting it out of the, out the door, like the inertia switch, uh, powers the relay and does that kind of stuff. So some of it I need to keep. So the TFI harness is one and I'm just a wire at a time, D pin where it needs to go. I've got to run something out for uh, coil wire. So I've got the coil wire is here. I know the green wire, which is the signal wire, like the negative on the coil also is going to run the tack. I don't need that, but I will need the power to run the coil that I'm going to run. So I'm trying to keep some of that stuff handy. It's here, so I'm pulling it out of the way, and then I will run it back through whenever I know whatever's going to stay. But for now, I'm just roughing this thing out and picking pieces off of it a little bit at a time. Once I get it thinned out to things that I know are going to stay, I'll start putting it where it needs to go. It looks like chaos, but I'm starting to get this thing worked out. I'm about two hours in, going back and forth between the two cars. I've got the Ron Francis harness sort of tied where it's going to be. Everything else is trimmed off of it. Now I need to run the expansion connector wires from PCM out, which would be the uh, extra wires for the injectors and coil wires. So the wires that control that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and add nitrous wiring. Uh, I haven't really said too much about the goals for this thing, but it is gonna get all the nitrous it'll take plus some. So that's gonna be part of it. And then on the exhaust side, I'm gonna move boost control and uh, O2 sensor stuff to this side. Nothing else is gonna come to the exhaust side. All right, I'm up to the point where I'm going to take this harness to the house, sit in a nice comfortable chair, deep in all the connectors that are there so I can run everything through the firewall grommet, and I'm going to crimp the pins for the expansion connector that goes in the PCM. That way when I come back the next time, I'm going to drop everything in place, pull it to the right length, and I can start finishing stuff so that uh, injector and coil wire can be done. All right, it's a new day. I took this home. I probably didn't need to do that. Uh, these brand new connectors are really good and they deep in fast so uh, But it was nice to just sit at a desk and do this really quick and not have to worry about anything I ran everything through the pinto firewall grommet and uh, It's gonna turn out really nice. So this is gonna be there. That's gonna come through where the factory grommet was I still need to adjust some lengths of things and the bulk of the harness is gonna sit underneath the cow panel and what I've decided now, after I thought about it, I am not going to do a dash bar. I'm gonna clip everything under the cow panel like the factory harness was. For the PCM mount, I decided I'm, I like this area. It's out of foot traffic if this thing keeps a passenger seat. And it's off the firewall, it's up a little bit, it's not exactly under the windshield. So um, hopefully this, this right here is a good, easily accessible area low traffic so i may make an extra brace and i'm not really sure it, it's nothing uh, structural that needs to be done but i might anyway just to make it easier to mount things and clip things too so we'll see we'll get into that too i'm to the point now i can go ahead and close start closing the holes up i'm not going to use any of them now i'm 100 percent sure of that and the other issue when i went through and uh, got all of the body harness working it left some extra long wires so I've just got them bundled together. Some of these are coil wires and things like that I can get rid of. But I just left them on there for now in case I needed to grab a power wire from something. These are all still intact. And they might all get uh, removed completely. We'll just have to see as we get into the EFI harness. That looks way more organized. <laughs> Installed. All right, so it's kind of squared away. Injector wires are in. And I need to decide the final resting place of everything. So we've got things like this idle air control and this one's throttle position sensor. So the intake is more than likely most of this car's life because of the way the hood and the engine sits. The intake is going to be forward facing. So I at least need stuff to be able to reach over here and here. If it'll reach forward, it'll reach over here. So I'm kind of good there. And the air charge temp sensor. If you look, this goes way out to the front. It's super long. That's not it. And if you look, the air charge temp sensor is super long. It goes way out to the front. Um, 
there is what looks like a solder joint, some tape. So like I said, this is a prototype harness. My guess is what they were doing with this is they ran the wires where they needed to be and then added the extra length or took away length, whatever they were doing to get the, the length right. And then they'll go build a production harness. All of this stuff goes away and you get all your lengths in one shot. These, it, it kind of, I haven't taken the tape off. It feels like a solder joint. If it is, I will just add shrink tube over it. But more than likely, because of the extra length, this thing's really, really long for a Pinto. It looks like it's made to run all the way around and go to the front side. The Ranger is in the front passenger side corner, so it runs all the way around. This would be the right length for that. I am just gonna run forward, and the air charge temp sensor is going to be, uh, the air is gonna come out of the turbo, go through a tube, across the front, through an intercooler, through another tube, and it's gonna come up and the air charge temp sensor is gonna sit about here. So that'll be one of the last things that I cut to length, but it'll be just in front of the throttle body. So somewhere around right here, we'll worry about that later too. Uh, it's plenty long, so I don't need to worry about that till the very end. And I need to tie injectors up a little bit. So the injectors on this, these are still wired as batch fire. There's two red, two tan, and two red, two yellow. So I still need to change the wiring for that so that it'll be sequential. All right, I've never really decided where the change needs to happen for from batch fire to sequential. So this car is gonna be really good. We're gonna figure all of that stuff out. The Mustang, as the injector size went up, it started with 85s and 95s, and then uh, it went to 120 pound injectors, and then it got 144, somewhere along the way. The car got switched to sequential injection. Sequential is where it fires each fuel injector in the firing order. And uh, batch fire, like uh, the 87, 88 Thunderbirds, pretty much all four, four cylinders that were fuel injected for these 2.3s, they're batch fire. They fire two cylinders at a time. You eliminate some parts when you do that, keep it simple, and it, it makes it enough power to move itself, and that's about it. So um, the good thing about the Pinto, though, I'm going to wire it for sequential. Then once we do that, we can run it as anything, and I will dyno it as batch fire, dyno it as sequential with no tuning. We can tune individual cylinders, which would be neat. And uh, I'm talking to the neighbor about doing this on an engine dyno, but I also want to do it in the chassis dyno. So my, my real goal is to run engines on the engine dyno, put it in the car, take it to the chassis dyno, have those two numbers, get the weight of the car, and then run it down the track, and then we'll be able to see a full comparison. I think you'll be pretty surprised to see that the numbers that it makes on the dyno seem low compared to what it runs at the track, because people, inflate their numbers so bad they, they lose track of reality. But put in the comments. Um, I'm gonna be testing as much stuff as we can think of. This car is just fun project for science. So um, we can check pressures, temperatures, anything. We will hang sensors on the whole car if you want to. So put in the comments what you wanna see and I'll add it to the list and we'll make sure we're keeping track of that as we go along. So for now though, we'll get back at it. All right, to deep in these connectors, these are really easy to see, so this one's yellow. There's a little wedge clip in there, and you pop it out. Because these are all brand new, you can use just a regular pick, and these go really, really nice. And there's a seal that's in there, so keep track of that, the red part. So the yellow part is just a wedge, and it locks the pins. There's a little locking tab, and this wedges it against the metal part. And when you pull the wedge out, you can pry the locking tab out of the way very, very gently, and then you can pull the wire out. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little locking tab, and don't pull on the wire any until you've got the locking tab out of the way, and give it just a very slight nudge for the locking pin, and then you can pull the wire, the wire comes right out. And I just did that over and over and over and over again, uh, pull one wire out, run it through the boot, click it back into place in, into this one. Uh, this is an injector connector. And then do the next wire. So I did the power wire through the grommet, do the next wire, click it back in. And I just did all of them. And it went extremely fast because these are nice, brand new. When they're old connectors, the plastic gets really brittle and it gets oil and stuff all over it. So when you try to pry the locking tab out of the way ever so slightly, sometimes they'll break off. So... Uh, it's really easy to do. These are nice. This makes it way better. Before I go too much farther, I'm going to make some kind of mount for this. Here's my half-off LA3. Ask yourself what happened to get in that kind of position. But anyway, so it's going to mount something like this here or there, somewhere like that. 
I'll add a bar this way and then have it mount in the middle. I need to be able to access both ends of the computer though, because there's uh, connectors on each end. And you need to be able to get the front cover off of those things so you can put jumpers in if you need to. So I wanna be able to access it top and bottom and uh, from the front. And then there's a coil driver that needs to fit in there too. So we'll start, maybe I can find a piece of scrap metal I can put in there and uh, we can get going here. And it's the first day over 90 degrees. So I'm gonna turn the fan on. Here's some catchy time-lapse music. Here we go. Hey. Well, almost, yeah. Kinda like that. Then the half-off LA-3. Go maybe like this, or like that. Either way, that gives me a little something to work with. I'm gonna cut a patch for that hole, and I'm gonna wait on welding this in before I do that. I'll get that patch, and then I'll get this, probably. But it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Kind of bad, but I'm not too upset. This will be fine. Put some kind of sheet of something on here. I haven't decided it, it might just be thin metal. I worked at a metal shop when I was uh, like 15 or 16, like a little farm fabrication welding shop. And the guy told me, hey, it's okay. If you're gonna weld like that, that's fine. You're gonna need to learn how to use this grinder though. And I have not gotten any better at welding. This looks awful, but it'll be fine. <laughs> There we go, super custom, not carbon fiber. And then I'm gonna bolt the, uh, this is the bottom half of the PCM. I'll bolt that there. This is the ignition coil igniter. I'll put that in some arrangement there. Both of those will fit. I'm just gonna drill a couple holes in the computer case. I'll leave the case half bolted to the mounting bracket and then I'll just set the PCM on and put the six screws in, put a cover over it. And this will be super easy to get to, whichever way I end up doing this one. Maybe that way. Yeah, drill some holes. Got the igniter. Computer will sit like that. You can still get access to it. And I need to get some new fasteners. But uh, inevitably, somebody's going to ask me why I didn't use carbon fiber. So uh, let's at least throw a paint job on it real quick. Clean this up real quick. Then I'll lay a carbon fiber paint job on it and it'll be good to go. Eh, <laughs> carbon fiber. Now it's carbon fiber. All right, here's what happened. I started running one wire at a time and I would look at the Mustang. I'm trying to make everything match. And uh, I would pull a wire for this car. I'd get it into place. I'd kind of have something to do. I'd go leave, do whatever. And I never turned the camera on. I just kept saying I would do it on the next wire and the next wire and the next wire. And then I'm done. So uh, that that's it. Let's talk about what I did, how I got here, where we're going. We'll do the whole thing. So I've been saying that the game plan for this car was to run a stock engine. We'll get Trevor down the track. He's never drag raced, so it would be fun to do that. And that's on the list of things to do, but it's a pretty big list for this car. I also, when I was building the Mustang engine, I bought two of everything. So I have a second set of CP pistons. I have another set of connecting rods. I've got another crank block. I bought a second Bowport cylinder head. I have two of everything. So 
the engine that's in the Mustang, I will also put a copy of that into this car too. So it'll make the same power as that and be uh, four or 500 pounds lighter. Completely different suspension. So I think it will present its own challenges, whether we can even get it to go down the track, but it should be fun. We'll still start slow. Uh, we'll, we'll get Trevor down the track and he'll be my test dummy. I'll have him drive it and make sure we can get it to go straight with 90 to 100 horsepower and then we'll turbo at 200 horsepower, 300 horsepower, and then I'll put a good engine in it. So, But here's how I got to that point. So I was thinking this whole thing out and trying to decide if I wanted to run a distributor. I've got a, an ocean of engines we're going to throw in this thing to, just to blow them up in fun different ways and see what they can really handle. But I went ahead and wired it for the cam angle sensor and I added a fuel pressure sensor and a vehicle speed sensor, a drive shaft sensor. So I used the sort of a factory wiring setup for uh, for a drive shaft speed sensor. And that way, it I can pull the engine out of the Mustang if I wanted to. Everything's an exact copy. If I build an engine for this and I get it all dialed in, I can put it in that or vice versa. Pretty happy with that. So when I was pulling wires, here, what I did, if I had a good connection out at the engine, I would pull the wire all the way through, route it where I wanted it to go, cut and do the length at the PCM side, like this. I'm not real confident in my ability to crimp these, so uh, if I don't have any other option, I will just take some pieces of harness that I've already got, get them from the junkyard or whatever, and um, I'll just cut it whatever length I want it to be, and I will leave those kind of long, and I'm going to twist this one this way. Make sure nothing is sticking out. We'll twist that one that way. Make sure nothing's sticking out. And then the cool thing about working on a junk car, it's sort of straightened out there. Um, you can use the car as a heat sink. It works just wonderfully. I don't want to mess up the moss that's growing here, but I keep a finger on the wire just so I can feel how hot everything's getting. Flip it over. Do the same thing just to make sure it pulls all the way through. There we go. And then uh, this stuff is a heat shrink tube with sealer in it, and uh, it says ES1 on it. This stuff comes in a Ford kit. That's where I discovered it, and you can just buy that in bulk on eBay or wherever. And uh, just put that on there and throw a little heat at it, and uh, that, that's pretty much it. I'll do the whole car this way if I don't have any other option. All of this is with the Ron Francis harness. It comes through the firewall on the driver's side instead of the, the Mustangs come through on the passenger side. I do everything on the driver's side to keep the heat away from any of the wiring. It runs across underneath the, the cowl and the PCM mounts right here on the inside just the same way that it would on the, a Fox Body Mustang. So that's as similar as I can make it. This harness could probably swap into that one and be okay. I still have some clipping to do, some finish work. I will definitely get it running in case I mess something up. I don't have to tear apart some nice cleaned up wiring. But, now you know where we're going. Uh, next video, I'm going to do a pimp install, probably. I need to order that today. should have it for the next video. And uh, I'm not very good at that, and it's been a long time since I've done it. So we will just stumble through that together. You can see where I go to find answers. And it'll be fine. Just like the wiring harness, it's easy to be intimidated by this stuff. But you just get into it, and I will show you where you go to find answers, and it'll be just fine. The rest of the car will finish up in the next video or two. I'm going to get cracking so we can get this thing down the track. The black Mustang will probably go to the track pretty soon. Put in the comments if you want to see that. I, decent chance we can get that down the track. It's really hot now, though. I waited until June, so that wasn't a real good move. But um, maybe we can get that one out, too. But that's it for now. Leave some comments. Like the video. Subscribe. Tell all your friends. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.